We're in Washington, D.C. for a relaxing couples weekend away, and we're taking you along. We're Saida and Jermaine, the creators of Travel Check-Ins. And in this video, we'll share our top free and cheap things to do, see, and places to be. We invite you to join our YouTube family if this video helps you decide whether or not to visit DC. We want you to be part of our travel journeys and by subscribing, we can become part of yours. First on our list are some hotel recommendations perfect for everyone, but especially for adulting. Yep, these hotels are super clean, quiet, and I barely see any children there. Jermaine and I are parents of four, so we love kids. But when on a couple's getaway, we want an as kid-free of an environment as possible. If you'd like to learn more about these two hotels, I have linked to our full review and room tour of both of them up above. Next up, we want to give you a few stress-free and amazing breakfast options. What makes them stress-free is their location. And what makes them amazing is the food and atmosphere. Both of the hotels have a restaurant located inside of them. Ordering room service or heading down to the restaurant are both convenient ways to start the day before sightseeing. The Park Hyatt DC has a restaurant called Blue Duck Tavern, which used to be a Michelin star restaurant. And everything that I've eaten in there has been amazing. And the great thing about Blue Duck Tavern is that they have indoor and outdoor seating and you don't even have to be a guest at the hotel to eat here. If you're staying at the Thompson Hotel closer to the marinas, they have a restaurant called Surveyor that serves up American style breakfast, lunch, and dinner. It's conveniently located right in the hotel lobby and is open to guests and the public. Whenever we're staying and eating at the Thompson, we use this opportunity to go down to the marinas or what some people call the DC wharfs. It's walkable from the hotel and it's the happening spot for this part of DC. You can find restaurants, parks, group exercise events, and more down there. And the best part is it's completely free. Aside from eating, what we come to DC for the most is the museums and the national monuments. There are seven free museums in the DC area. Those include the National Gallery of Art, the Smithsonian Castle, the National Museum of African American History and Culture, the National Museum of Natural History, the National Museum of the American Indian, the United States Holocaust Memorial Museum, which we're going in now, and the Hirschhorn Museum and Sculpture Garden. Washington DC is one of those destinations that has a lot of things you can do, but you can't get them all done in one weekend, which is why Jermaine and I have been here multiple times. So let me share a few tips for first time visitors or for someone who has not done the whole tourist thing in DC. I highly recommend visiting the Smithsonian website and reserving your time slots for the museums that you want to visit. What this does is it gives you a digital entry ticket for the Smithsonian Museum that you want to visit. That allows you to bypass the lines and ensures that you're able to get in. There is a $1 fee for the mobile ticket or to use the barcode for the downloadable ticket to enter into the museum. My second piece of advice is don't go crazy and try to do everything. It is really hard to visit all of the museums that you wanna visit as well as all of the different monuments. Something that you might think is really close, sometimes when you start to walking, it's really farther than you anticipated. If you want to see the most prominent monuments, I'll talk later about that in this video, exactly where you should go on the National Mall to do that. If you're going to visit the museums, I highly recommend limiting yourself to two museums, maybe three in a weekend's time. Even with timed entries at these museums, it can be crowded in there. It was especially crowded in this Holocaust Museum. A great strategy is going to the end of the exhibits and starting from the back of the museum and working your way to the front will help you to better see things and maybe save some time versus being really crammed in the crowds that kind of form at the beginning of the museum entryway. And if you don't know which museum to start with, I highly recommend the Holocaust Museum as well as the National Museum of African American History and Culture. 
And if you do visit those two museums, be sure to bring your Kleenex along if you're kind of a sensitive person and emotional person because these exhibits really dig deep into what happened with the Jews and also what happened with black people during the Holocaust and slavery. Just to show you how walkable the museums are, you see us walking over to the National Museum of African American History and Culture. We've already got our ticket on our phone. We did pay the dollar fee to have that downloaded so that we can go ahead and skip the line and get right in. This is the building, which is massive and absolutely amazing in how it was designed. So let me tell you a little bit about this museum. The National Museum of African American History and Culture is the only national museum devoted exclusively to the documentation of African American life, history, and culture. The museum was established by an act of Congress in 2003, following decades of efforts to promote and highlight the contributions of African Americans. To date, the museum has collected more than 40,000 artifacts and nearly 100,000 individuals have become members. The museum opened to the public on September 24, 2016 as the 19th Museum of the Smithsonian Institution Collection. The building was designed by David Adage and Philip Freelon who had won an international competition in April 2009 to design the building. The building sits on a five acre plot of land and the project started in February 2012 and ended in September 2016. The exhibits start from the first floor to the top floor and each floor takes you on a journey through African American history. Next up on our list of free and cheap things to do in Washington, D.C. is visiting the Washington Monument. The Washington Monument is walking distance from the National Museum of African American History and Culture. It's the tallest stone structure in the world and stands at just over 555 feet in the air. The monument is made of marble, granite, and sandstone and took 19 years to build. Additional free monuments to see within walking distance are the National World War II Memorial, and the Lincoln Memorial Reflecting Pool on the National Mall. The rectangular pool is 2,028 feet long and 167 feet wide. It literally looks like glass in person. There's also the Martin Luther King Memorial, Thomas Jefferson Memorial, and the Lincoln Memorial, which are also free, but a little bit farther away to walk. After taking in the sights, you may consider grabbing some of DC's famous chicken and mumbo sauce. According to DC locals on YouTube, some of the best is served at Grand China Chinese Restaurant. You can try it out on two wings for just under $4, and you can place your order with the chicken dredged in the mumbo sauce, or you can ask for it on the side. Another place to eat if you're looking for something healthy and you don't have this particular restaurant in your area is going to be Sweet Green. They serve simple, seasonal, healthy salads and grain bowls made in the store from scratch. For those of you who have watched this far, do you guys want to see our top recommendations for DC hotels and dining? Or maybe a video of do's and don'ts when visiting DC? Let us know down in the comment section below. So if you guys were thinking of things to do in DC, I hope this video helped you make some decisions. Make sure you hit the thumbs up button, make sure you subscribe to our channel, and drop any questions or comments down in the comment section below. Also, we post new videos every Friday and we would love for you to keep up with our family journeys, our travels, finances, and all the fun. We love when you engage, so let us know what your favorite free or cheap idea from the video was down in the comment section below. Thank you for watching and subscribing and we'll catch you in the next one.